lot of the scenarios, and we are speaking generally here, this is not like that film with Gerard Depardieu and Angie McDowell, Green Card, which is a sort of quirky. <laughs> there seems to be, in a general term, it's quite darker forces that hit that Well, forces. yes, and, and I mean, when this started three years ago, I was as, as green as anyone else. Um, I understood that people who are not indigenous British citizens would, would want to get married, and that's totally acceptable and, and understandable. It was only when it became apparent to us here that there just seemed to be a very high instance of things that just didn't ring right. There was a discordant sound about so much that was going on that we decided we needed to look at things a little bit deeper. It's quite acceptable when we prepare anyone for marriage to ask a very simple question, which is, why do you want to get married? We live in a society today where you don't have to get married. You, you can live together, and certainly from the church's point of view, although we promote marriage, we, we never discriminate against people who are not married. We, we always baptise their children. We treat them exactly the same. We, we'd like them to get married, but only if they understand the seriousness of what marriage is and if they listen to what the church says about marriage and decide that that's just not for them, that, that's fine. I mean... You, integrity in which that decision is made is, is respected by us all. So there needs to be a good reason why you want to get married. If you think that someone's taking you very lightly, that, or just being generally dismissive, then that's one thing, obviously. And you can usually have a chat with them and, and you just appreciate that they're really, really rather nervous and they're laughing or taking it very lightly because they do understand the absolute commitment that's being required. But in many instances of the, of the marriages that were presenting themselves with foreign nationals for us, it was clear that there was a very dark side, a very dark side. Now I'm not, although you know, I've thrown people out of the church in the middle of their marriage, and I suppose you could argue that's, that's quite a hard thing. It needs a lot of steediness about you, and it makes you very hard and determined, a little bit callous. I'm, I'm a very warm, sympathetic person underneath. And when we have the privilege as clergy of marrying people, you get to know them well. You stand very, very close to them. And when you marry them, you're within a few inches of them. And you can see, you get to see their faces. You get to see the integrity. You get to see the love and the warmth and the affection. And that's why it's quite acceptable for people to laugh, because they're, they're happy to be with each other. They love each other very, very dearly. But sometimes when you look at the faces, um, particularly the women, you, you actually see very, very frightened individuals, seriously frightened. Um, and you begin to wonder what lies behind that fear. There's no fun or laughter in their lives, there's just a general sense of, of darkness, really. And chatting with the chaps from the border agency and with the, with the police, we've got a much clearer idea, I think, now, that there are certain individuals who are just nefariously minded, they're criminals, and all they want is to make money, to traffic individuals, to traffic people, to bring young girls in either to be slaves, to work for, for individuals for a price. A lot of it obviously is tied up with um, sex trafficking, prostitution, drug running, all those sorts of things. And these poor girls can be plucked from relative obscurity and relative poverty promised all sorts of glamour and money or a better life for them. You want to stand up against injustice. I mean, we can't overturn kingdoms, we can't overturn the drugs lords and all this, but we can do what we can at, the, at a local level. So you want to be noble, you want to be courageous, and you have a great deal of pity, but you appreciate that there are forces at work and people and networks that you just don't understand and, and probably have got very little hope of ever understanding other than doing what you can, which is what we have done here in Tilbury at this particular point, which is to involve the agencies who do understand, who have the powers to investigate, who have the powers not only to prevent marriages but also to say, yes, these are fine. You know, don't worry about these individuals. There's nothing, there's no reason why they can't get married. But to give us the green light, but if necessary, to, to determine exactly what's going on, to try to isolate particular individuals, 
to look at particular addresses because there are particular addresses in and around Tilbury that have cropped up time and time again. So look into from whence these individuals are coming, where they're hoping to go to, what their motivation is. So that's what we've done. We've, we've tried to use the powers that we've got, our own reasoning, our own determination, and the wider agencies that have the proper power and responsibility. But underneath all of that is a very, very simple motivation, and it, it, it's sort of twofold, really. If you go into St John's, on one of the walls there's a plaque, and it's, it was erected in dedication to a chap who spent 40 years, including service at St John's, as a church warden. And you begin to appreciate that we're not the oldest church in Thurrock, we're not the oldest church in the world, we've only been here just over a hundred years. But the one thing about St John's, the one thing that really made its impression on me when I first came down to have a look, was the fact that it was a church where people had said their prayers, where there'd been faith, there's a wonderful atmosphere in there. And it's a church that's loved, it's cleaned regularly, cleaned within an inch of its life, Every two weeks, it's spotless, it smells beautifully clean. People love their church. And a number of people have given a great deal of time and faithful service to make sure that it's still here today. Because we're not the richest part of the world either. But it's managed and it continues to manage because people give sacrificially, they give generously what they have in their time. So that was one. And another particular inspiration to me when I came was a, a chap who was relatively well known in Tilbury in his time and also in Greys because he was um, he finished up his career in the police service as an acting chief inspector. Very well known he was at, um, at the rugby club, the rugby club, David Llewellyn, who was a, a wonderful man in all, all ways. He had a tremendous faith. He, he knew his Bible back to front and he was one of those that you had to, you know, he kept the vicar on their toes because you, you, you couldn't be lax with what you said or believed or thought. But he, he was a policeman through and through. He used to have a beat round till, but he was well known by a number of people. And the one thing about David was he had an ability to blend a true, deep and lively faith with a tremendous ability to convince you that as a Christian, you have to do the right thing. You have to stand up for what you believe. You have to stand up against injustice and against the wrong. And right from the start, with that plaque on the wall and with the example of David, who passed away a few years ago, we could hear him in his, his rich Welsh tones telling us that we needed to do this because it wasn't right. Now, he would understand the wider picture because he would have dealt with all sorts of things in his police service. But it was the fact that these two people are just two of a whole host of people who love St John's, who offer their love, their care, their kindness, support to me, to my wife. But principally they do it for St John's. And the people of Tilbury love St John's. They have a tremendous affection for their church. And we needed to do it for them. Because it's a strong word to use to say that we feel we've been violated. But we, we to a degree we do. Because we feel that criminals, for their own ends, have just used the church, its convenience the apparent openness and warmth that we offer, the intricacies of the legal system, and all those sorts of things. And the people that have really suffered have been the faithful people who come to St John's and supported it, in this generation and in other generations. Simply not right that people have used our church. And putting it very, very simply, we just want, we want it back. We want the church back that everybody knows and loves, that is open to all, irrespective of creed or colour, Everyone's welcome. The weddings, funerals, christenings, you name it. The ministry of St John's is dependent on its people. And they're the people that have been very poorly served. So we wanted to make sure that things got back on, on the right path. So that's why we did it. With the inspiration of two individuals and with a great deal of dedication and commitment from the two church wardens. I've taken a lot of credit, but it isn't all my work. You know, There's a lot of work going on behind the scenes. So we're grateful. We're grateful for the support that we've had and we're hopeful and pretty confident that the message has gone out. Please leave us alone and let us get on with doing what we really want to do, which is to make Tilbury a much better place by our prayers and by our love and by our service.